this is BBC One with all the League Cup action. Evening, welcome along to the best of this week's Carling Cup games and the stakes have been raised as 13 Premier League sides enter the second round and we'll see how they got on in the company of League Cup finalist Leroy Resenia. We'll also have the best of the action from the first round matches that were held over from a fortnight ago. So as you can imagine, there's plenty to look forward to tonight. With no European adventure for Liverpool this season, the Reds have got their eye on domestic silverware. Exeter City with the team standing in their way this evening. Brighton are a team very much on the up, unbeaten so far this season. Gus Poyet's men would see how far they progressed when Steve Bruce brought his Sunderland side down to the Amex. There were 23 matches in total on Tuesday and Wednesday. We'll bring you the best goals and the biggest upsets from what's been a busy couple of days in the Carling Cup. the games from Tuesday night now and there was an intriguing tie down at the Amex between Brighton who were going along well in their first season back in the championship and Sunderland who were looking for their first win of the season. Well Brighton gave a debut to Ryan Harley who they signed on Monday from Swansea while the Premier League side gave first starts to Craig Gardner, David Vaughan and goalkeeper Kieran Westwood. Commentary comes from Martin Fisher. Martin got a good foot in. This is Cecilio for Sunderland. Anker Graham was out very swiftly and the makeshift striker Stefan Sessegnon can't give Sunderland a dream start. Dunk picking out Bridcut who in turn looks for Mikhail Smith, steps inside Brown, good shot, oh good save, and Barnes over the bar. Really good football by Brighton, Mikhail Smith's shot too powerful to handle. And Barnes on the rebound can only clear the crossbar. This Poyet, who was a runner-up in this competition as a player for Spurs in 2002, but six years later, as the assistant manager at Spurs, he won the competition with one day Ramos. Gardner. And now Cessignon! Blocked by Ankergren. And Brighton get it clear to halfway. Better from the Premier League team. Bridcut sends it deep. Westwood got an enormous mighty mess. It's Mikhail Smith and it's over the bar. Well, why on earth did Kieran Westwood come for that? It was El Mohamedi's ball to clear. And I can only assume there was no shout from the fullback. Very nearly proved very costly for Sunderland. In his playing days, Steve Bruce played in the final of this competition no fewer than four times in a 10-year period. He won two, he lost two. Barnes is through. Fluffed his lines. Oh, and how he knows it. Well, it was a chance that came to Ashley Barnes so, so quickly, maybe too quickly. He certainly wasn't very quick in sizing up the opportunity because Richardson was across very smartly. And Mikhail Smith is in! And Mikhail Smith has hit the post! So, so close, Brighton to going in front. Again, it's the ball over the top, this time from Bridcut. And Mikhail Smith in behind Brown, the flag stayed down. Well, neither manager looks particularly calm, do they? Barnes with the flick on. Westwood came and then went back. Is that a penalty? I think it is. And it might well be a red card as well. No, it's a yellow card for the Brighton player who went down. Make up your own mind here as Cordron got to the ball first. Was there any contact by Westwood who was taking almighty risk flying out that quickly? There's definite contact. The right boot of Westwood on the left boot of Cordron. It's a huge escape for Westwood and Sunderland.
fullback for Sessegnon. Connor Wickham waits in the middle at the moment, guarded by Dunk. Sessegnon might go himself here. He's done well. Blocked by Ankergren. He has been Sunderland's most likely scorer this evening. The man from Benin. Dong Wangji. Looking strong. Finding Larson. Connor Wickham and Gardner are in there. Sessegnon too. Here is Gardner to win it, maybe. Good save, Ankergren. Gardner brought the best out of Ankergren at his near post. It's been a long trip down here. It'll be an equally long journey back, but they won't be uh, starting the coach for a while longer yet. This is going into extra time. Navarro. Noon. Not as effective on this right-hand side as he was on the left, but that's not bad. Navarro in beyond uh, Richardson. Mikhail Smith back post. 1-0 Brighton. Five minutes into extra time and Brighton's record signing breaks the deadlock and what a beautifully constructed goal Navarro with a lovely deep centre and Mikhail Smith got away from Ferdinand and El Mohamedi and helps himself to his third goal in blue and white stripes last season's top scorer in England Sets up an upset in round two of the Carling Cup. His Sunderland starts the season about to get even worse. It's come out here for Wickham. Over the crossbar. That was the chance that Conor Wickham wanted to arrive at his feet this evening. And he wasn't even close. Steve Bruce knows the game is up now. Brighton fans bouncing up and down all around him. I think overall we, we play a very good game, you know, and uh, I don't know for how long, if, how big is the difference between winning and losing, but we were good enough to win it. Well, we're hugely disappointed in that. You can. You know, I've said all along that a club of our stature, you know, we could, we're capable of winning five, six games. It's not our year. And uh, unfortunately, we have to lick our wounds and, and say congratulations to Brighton. They were, they were terrific on the night and, you know, they, uh, they played some really good stuff. We've started really well in the league and, and we took it into the cup game tonight. I think we just believe in, in the way we play football and we feel that it, whoever we play, we can, we can go out and beat. You rang the most, you chased the most. He doesn't stop, and uh, you know if you can, in top of that score, is I think it's magnificent for a player. Well done to Gus Poyer. It's been a dream start to, to life in their new home, isn't it? It's a dream, but it's no surprise to them. You know they just carried on where they left mm. off. Nobody wants to fancy playing Brighton at the moment, and uh, you know Gus has uh, got a bit of a grin on his face, and so he should do because his players are doing him proud. They're working really hard, and they link together fantastically well for what was eventually the winner. Uh, from Craig McHale Smith and this is something that as you say we've seen from Brighton week in week out it, obviously the whole of last season they're playing football like this yeah the Kieran Richardson be dis disappointed he switches off allows Navarro to push forward this is a lovely ball without even looking and there's Mikhail Smith on the far post and again the two fullbacks I said Kieran Richardson first but El Mohamedi playing like the wing back he was in, in Egypt uh, before he went to Sunderland he's out of position and it's easy headed for Mikhail Smith and it was decisive because you know both sides missed chances and uh, in the end, it was Sunderland's undo. They're playing with a level of confidence and nothing seems to phase the Seagulls at the minute. As for Sunderland, four wins out of 17 now for Steve Bruce. He's brought in a whole host of new signings, but he hasn't got a lot of time to get them to gel together. No, I mean, 10 new signings, he's used them sparingly. I think there were five, five in there last night. But the problem is, is they're playing all right, Sunderland, you know? It's just that they can't score. And as soon as they score, the likes of Jay and Conor Wickham, a session you'll play that front last night, they'll, they'll start to get that confidence. But the team at the moment are suffering because they're not confident hitting the back of the net on a regular basis. And, and Steve Bruce will have to address that very quickly.